Okay, hello, hello. Welcome to Couples Who Quarantine, presented by Holt Living. My name is Devanshi, and I have a, the pleasure of being here with two lovely people, power couple, Nicholas Bijan and Roxy Saulati. Thank you guys for being here so much. We're very excited to have you. Oh, and we have Red. Yes. Red yes, of course. How can I forget? <laughs> Guest of honor. <laughs> Guest of honor. But um, I quickly want to just um, read through both of your bios. So everyone watching knows exactly who you are if they don't already, which would be very strange. Um, but uh, Nicholas Bijan is the owner of one of the most expensive luxury menswear brands in the world, House of Bijan, which was founded by his father. Um, known for its signature yellow coloring and that very special edition Rolls Royce parked outside the Beverly Hills Boutique on Rodeo Drive. Uh, the brand has dressed some of the most recognizable male figures in the world, including none other than the greatest NBA player of all time, Michael Jordan. So welcome, Nicholas. Thank you. And his beautiful fiance, Roxy. A Beverly Hills native, Roxy Saulati, started working in design as a teen, attending USC for her undergraduate degree, and then Parsons New School of Design, where she earned her master's degree in interior design. Uh, since then, she has returned back to her Californian roots, where she joined a reality show on E! And now she runs her own interior design firm called Roxy Saulati Interiors, bringing to life her clean, modern, and ultra-luxurious aesthetic. So thank you, Roxy, for being here as well. And so you both are obvious, well, the three of you, rather, are obviously <laughs> quarantined together out in L.A. So Nicholas is very Ruth. I know. Yeah, it's like, quarantine um, beard. What is happening? This is not the man that I'm marrying. I always wanted to grow a beard, but I guess the beard doesn't want me to grow it. I should have said the four of you have joined us. So <laughs> this is actually very hairless. He's so lucky. And all he wants to do is grow a beard because he doesn't know how lucky he is to not have hair. And I said, it's time. Let's do yeah, it. I'll never have the chance to go this? a month without shaving. So I there think. You go. I'd give it a shot. A couple times, a couple days in there, it, it almost got taken off. A couple days, but... And why was that? Was that... Uh, out of frustration, you know? You get the like, like, okay, we're going to do it. I actually cut my hair like really short, but I left the beard. <laughs> but um, anyways... When you it, say it, you cut your hair, you mean yeah. you cut your hair or... No, 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 no. We, um, yeah, we feel a lot of that going on right now. Back, back yeah, in he, masks in a hazmat suit it was fine it was it was early on still i guess but it was irresponsible of us no i mean listen we're all learning every day and it's it's a crazy time but on that note tell us how quarantine has been for you guys how have you been adjusting how is it for you i think the first month was like really bizarre like what am i doing this I, i'm so busy like on my phone doing my jobs but it felt like not mo i didn't feel motivated i didn't feel excited it just felt bizarre and weird. And I think now, like as of the past like week, I have more of a routine. I feel like, okay, I get it. We're going through it. Um, yeah, it's been interesting. I mean, for the first week or two weeks, it was almost, I want to say scary. You know, you're thinking yeah. like, uh, I remember when I went into the grocery store like a month ago uh, for the first time since all of this stuff happened. And it was like seeing all of the shelves empty and the people looking for things frantically. It was like, wow, this is really scary. And, and you're, you know, you're glued to the television, to the news conferences, to the updates from the federal government, from the state governments. Um, but now, like after a month, it's like, it's, it's come to a point where it's like almost normalized a bit. And, yeah. you know, I was thinking the other day, like when you think back to a month ago, um, it feels like two or three months. You know, yeah. it's like, it feels like it was, it was a long time ago. And I think that probably Roxy was saying that probably has something to do with the fact that it was going on before we all quarantined, you know, like we were watching it in the news in Europe hearing and in Asia, it. hearing about it. But um, then it came here and it kind of got much more serious, but it, it feels like it's been a long time. It's been nice to be home and luckily- Oh my God, Nick's having the best quarantine of anybody. He plays video games all <laughs> day. I've oh had to come back God. on the video games a bit. They're a little bit over, over they're it's taking over my so life. Excessive. The first, I'll tell you, the first month, it was fun. But now that we've passed the month point, for me. <laughs> it's like, 
okay, this is now a normal situation and we have to kind of move. It's not a vacation, you I know, like we have to move forward. Schedule and routine. I think it's very important, not just playing like Call of Duty with the headset. <laughs> okay, babe, food, babe, hungry. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask, are you a Call of Duty or a, I don't even know what. Oh, yeah, we have a, we have a, a, a group of friends that play it. It's a nice escape. At least I'm keeping myself busy. I guess. Maybe I'm just jealous. Yeah. But I'm not. No, Roxy needs her, her Call of Duty equivalent. No, we've been, no, but we've been, we've been, we've we've been, Thank you. We've, been, oh, yeah. we've been working out a lot, we've been walks. cooking, organizing the house, walk. of course we have this puppy that's been keeping us so busy mm -hmm. and um, you know there's, there's, there's a routine and we're adapting just like everybody else. So on that note as you're sort of adapting to this new landscape and sort of new environment of what life is, how if at all has your relationship sort of changed within that that process if, if it has or if it hasn't? Yeah, well, I mean, for me, it's it's nice to, I mean, there's nice aspects and there's not nice aspects of it, but it's been nice to be able to stay home and spend more time together. You know, we're both so busy with our jobs that we really only see each other on a no normal uh, basis. We only see each other, um, you know, in the evenings and in the mornings, but to spend the day together and, uh, you know, working from home and working on our phones uh, together to, to like, just learn more about uh, how we deal with like our businesses and stuff like that. It's been interesting and it's been nice to see you do that. And uh, it's been nice to spend more time with you. And I think we've made it this long with just one argument. We had so, one argument. Yeah. It, it was like, enough Call of Duty. Um, that was the blow up. <laughs> I, I don't know. Was it over Call of Duty? I don't know about that. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But also it's like, it's, I'm just, we're, I'm anxious in general. I've been, and, I've been anxious. So I think that it's just bizarre. And also I, d I design our home. Now that Nick's home more, he notices like, babe, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's go build this. And I'm like, that's been an actually really cool part of being home. It's like, I never, we have this beautiful house that Roxy's, you know, been fixing up and making our own over the last couple of years. And, uh, I don't ever get to enjoy it, you know? I'm always at the office and then I come home and it's dark. We have, we have, you know, we're fortunate enough to have uh, like some gardens and outdoor area that when I come home, it's dark and I never see it. So to be home and to spend time here, we've been really enjoying that. And I know we're uh, really lucky to have that and not everybody does, but it's, it's been nice. And that's one, you know, half glass full yeah. aspect of, of quarantine. Yeah, for sure. And so just explaining a little bit about what you're doing at home and, you know, tidying up the house and doing, you know, remodeling to a certain extent, what is your average day? What does it look like for both of you, both separately and together now that you're quarantined together? Yeah, I think we've focused a lot on exercising and on organizing, on cooking, on things that we don't really get the chance to do during the day normally like for example we've been going on a lot of walks um with the dog with the puppy and then also my trainers that i usually work out with early in the morning like around six or seven in the morning on a weekly basis uh, two or three times a week have been uh, able to train us both over zoom so they it was really awesome we go to, i go to this gym in la called studio and uh they like early on before we were even like under stay-at-home orders they dropped off equipment. a whole bunch of equipment from the gym into the house uh, and we didn't even see them we just you know came outside of the house and it was in our driveway and uh, we've been able to do zoom meetings uh, workout sessions and then Roxy's been able to join them too she's been doing them so that's something that we've been doing on a, like a four time a week basis and then the rest of the day you know it's just taking care of the puppy organizing different parts of the house. We started with the kitchen. Yeah, I do like one room or one section per day. So I don't like it too overwhelmed. Yeah, we've been moving around yeah. and, and 
that's been awesome to be able to take yeah, care of that. Finally getting stuff done that I've been wanting to get done that I never get around Definitely to. Definitely no video game playing. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Oh, yeah. But I think the important thing is we get up in the morning at 8 a.m. regardless. We don't sleep in. Like we, we still have our like, set schedule. Yeah, we've, we've been doing that. We've been getting dressed also. Yeah. You know, like you don't. Yeah, just... no sweatpants. That's my rule. Yeah, the first week or so it was like all sweatpants. Yeah. And after a week we were like, whoa. It was so, making me so depressed. Right. To, like, right. We started to, to get dressed up and to. I mean, I'm not wearing a suit and tie like I usually do, but I'm at least, you know, not wearing pajamas. a sports jacket or, or jeans or something like that. I think that's really important for, for our sanity. I think that being dressed thing is very important because yeah, I just can't see. Yeah, I, 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 I do understand that. And obviously you both are fairly fashion forward, you know, coming from a certain degree in different ways, either with fashion backgrounds, design backgrounds. So how has your wardrobe changed during this time i know you said no sweatpants rule i haven't gotten quite there yet so <laughs> today actually was the exception um but um but yeah how has that changed and um what are you looking forward to coming out of quarantine fashion wise as well yeah i mean for us it's just figuring out how to still feel like comfortable. you know comfortable but you know Look nice. somewhat presentable I guess and uh you know I remember uh, like the first week we were in quarantine I was thinking you know I should at least get dressed up a little bit so I'm like showing some respect to my fiance <laughs> it's not like I've just thrown all care out the window but um it's been good it's been it's been get, we've been getting used to that and I think you know that the changes that we see in our wardrobes uh during this time will be temporary because I think people really miss getting dressed up. And I think, you know, people who, who like to wear nice things and maybe for men, they like to wear, you know, a suit or they like to get dressed up and go out. You know, that's human nature. We crave those things. So regardless of whether we need or not, um, once things normalize and we're able to go out a little bit more, I think people would, would, would take advantage of that and they'll, they'll feel that craving. And that goes for everything, not just getting dressed up. That goes for, you know, yeah, going sure. out to restaurants, going out shopping, going out to parties. Of course it will take time, I think, for people to normalize and get like comfortable again. But, you know, millions of years we've been going out and living our lives one month and two months in quarantine isn't going to change that. I don't think. I can't wait to get dressed. Like I want to wear colors and like, I want to just wear everything that I, everything is like, I feel so like subdued. I'm in like a sweater and jeans every day. It's nice, it's cozy, but I want to feel nice and dressed. No, but you've been doing those uh, silk scarves as masks. Oh yeah, I wear all my like nice air mask scarves. I just tie them as a scarf around my neck and then I pull them up over whenever I need to. And then yesterday I did the same thing. I took like a nice scarf I have and made it into a bandana face mask, face yeah. mask to wear because we were going for a walk. But it was cashmere and so like 15 minutes into the walk, I was like, I'm done with yeah, I gotta this. Go. <laughs> yeah. LA and cashmere. Yeah, not, I know that I remember. It's been a while, but I yeah, it was it um, was uh, it was it was not thought through thoroughly, but yeah, you guys are getting a lot of um, of comments as we're going. A lot of people are saying how super cute you are. Um, mm -hmm. Tommy wanted to know, Tommy Falore. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Wants to know how you're both keeping fit. So maybe walking us through some of those Zoom fitness sessions you're doing yeah. with your trainer. Yeah, I mean, it's embarrassing that I don't really like remember what we do, but it's pretty basic stuff. They brought over just like a bench and some bands and weights. And, weights. and what we do is we, we obviously we have like a, a warm up session where we're like running back and forth, like in a, a small area or doing jump ropes or jumping jacks or burpees, things like that. And then uh, it's different days. We work on different parts, just like you would in a gym. So for example, the bands or the battle ropes or um, what else do they have you do? I mean, ours I are a little different. Like, we focus, like, I focus more on, on um, arms and muscles and she doesn't resistance like Resistance so. bands and that kind of stuff, like not like heavy weights. And for me, the walking is really important. A lot of sit-ups. Yeah. They make us do a lot of sit-ups. I like going on the walk. I think for me, walks are really important. It's nice to be outside. It's nice to just like. Yeah, I mean, we did like seven and a half miles the other day yeah. of walking, and we I was. We leave our house so and walk everywhere. 
Yeah, we, I was dead by the time. The yeah. next day I was so sore. So It's really nice. But, I mean, what else? We, you have to keep busy, so what else is there to do? But we've also been eating equally as much as we've been <laughs> working oh out. I had my first so. salad in a week yesterday. I wanted to die. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, wow, greens. Are you guys cooking a lot, or are you ordering? Both, both. Yeah. We've been, we've been uh, cooking more and more. We're both not big cooks, so we've been I'm learning, like, recipes and trying, and We've done good. Like most of the meals, there was only one that we couldn't eat. <laughs> yeah, we postmates after, but we were getting better, trial and error. Yeah, uh, but we've been doing a lot of ordering from you know our local restaurants that are still open. We we want to support them. Yeah, and they need it really. They they need the support because they're they're there working, and while all of us are having the luxury and the uh, you know the, the chance to stay Same. home, they really can't. So. Um, it's been important for, for us to do that as well. You mentioned Ibaldi. Um, what are some of the other restaurants you're particularly fond of? LA has some of my favorite restaurants on earth. I lived there for five years. And yeah, yeah, there's a lot of good ones. Well, we've been going mainly to places that are close to us. Yeah, Porta Villa, John and Vinny's. No, we ordered from Medeo, we ordered from Ibaldi, and then last night we had some, uh, we ordered from Mastro's. Um, we made six ordered sides. Mainly places up near near uh, Beverly Hills, but um, crispy rice. Yeah, there's some cool new places that are opening up in LA that are like uh, satellite kitchen restaurants that are only for delivery. Yeah, and Delilah, we order a lot. Our friends own That's Delilah. Been cool. It's been so good. So many places. Yeah, and and South Beverly Grill. I mean, the oh, places yeah, that SBG, we always go. Every- there's like five or six restaurants that we always go to, and so we've just been ordering from them and going and picking it up, and a lot of them have. I'm sure just like in uh, Miami, they've kind of adapted to like bring it out to the curb and like make it super easy. So I'm going to take one more question from people that are watching because it's food related. I'm going to go back, but I will try and all these questions that are coming in, I'm going to try and get them all answered by you guys. We have a lot coming in. So um, last food related question is from Jamila Zafar asking for the best Persian restaurant in LA. Uh, Yeah. Ordered any Persian food? Farsi Cafe. Your mom, oh, her mom made us great Persian food. Yeah, and uh, here. like last week, and she dropped it off in the driveway with us and for us. It was so good. So good. Um, but I love Farsi Cafe. They're easy. Place. Yeah, that's that's a good delivery one. That's close to us. But the best one in LA is definitely Rafi's, Rafi's yeah. in Glendale. That's, it's the best. Kebab. It's like twenty minutes from here, and it's in Glendale, and it's so like good. so good. It's uh, that's probably one of the places that I'm definitely missing the most to go yeah. there and order. But Farsi Cafe has good stuff besides kebab, like all the other stews and rices that are more homemade. So we get both. Yeah, it's good. That's good for delivery. But yeah. if you're going to go once all of this is over Rafi's. somewhere to eat Persian food, don't go there. Go to Rafi's. Mm-hmm. 100%. <laughs> good to know. And speaking a little bit about world cuisine, obviously you both are fairly avid travelers. I see all over your Instagram pages, your in Europe, Asia, America, everywhere. So obviously that's changed a little bit now. Are you looking forward to traveling after this? Is What are your your feelings on that? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? We were thinking like, what if we just put on a hazmat suit and a mask and then go somewhere on like vacation? Like a remote island. But we figured that was, uh, that was not responsible. <laughs> and a few, my friend, my dear, dear friend from Mexico, he is, he's uh, quarantined in Punta Mita and he was like, just come stay with us here. Uh, we won't leave. And we were like seriously thinking about it. it. And then we got scared to go on an airplane. So then our other friends are in Oregon. They have a big ranch up in Oregon. Um, and they are quarantined in the middle of literally, it's like 500 acres in the middle of nowhere. So we were going to drive 10 hours up to Oregon to stay with them in this on this property. And <laughs> we still might do it. It's been like our plan for the last month, but we yeah. haven't done it. Um, but uh, it's scary. God forbid it, you never know if you have it or that. I don't know. No, you just want to do what you Be can to, to, yeah, play your play your part, do your part, and and uh, that's been um, that's been like what's kept us from traveling during this whole thing. We've been happy to stay home. And or even after, it's once it's be scary. once it's over, I mean, I think the number one priority for us is getting married. <laughs> we've we've uh, had our wedding in Lake Como postponed because of the situation in Italy and around the world. And that was uh, gonna be in um, May. So I think depending on how this goes, 
I think you have to wait and see. I don't know if people are going to want to get an airplane so quickly It's until there's a vaccine. Like, it's going to be kind of touching feel as we go. Yeah, and on that it's topic, so on that topic, it's tough for our guests, too, because, you know. What if they're scared? Or... Right now, no, but not only the, the, the health concerns right now, also so many people have been financially, financially impacted and taken uh, time off of work or been uh, temporarily laid off. So once things go back to normal and they're back at their jobs, it's hard for us to kind of, you know, expect. ask or expect them to take more time from their careers or their work and spend more money to come and to visit us uh, in, in a destination wedding. So we're working on thinking about that and, you know, who knows, maybe we'll just go and have a nice time on our own there or something. We'll see. We're definitely eager to go, go travel and to... Dying to go somewhere. Yeah. I just want to go to safe parts yeah. and not talk to anybody. I'll just... <laughs> anywhere, I'm happy to go. Um, one of our viewers, Jeremiah Gonzalez, actually just mentioned, as we were talking about Punta Mita, that they began to close all the restaurants there in the Puerto Vallarta area, so... Oh, wow. Right, yeah, and uh, I mean, that's most of the hotels, too, around the world are closed, too. I know that um, the Wynn in Las Vegas, where we have our boutique, is completely closed, as as well as most of the other hotels in Las Vegas. And that's, you know, that's that's to the point. You know, every time you start thinking, oh, well, what if we went and quarantined on vacation somewhere, like some people are doing, you think, well, I mean, this is not really a vacation. It's it's time for us to to make sacrifices so that we can get over this. I mean, people are working and having to. Risk, their lives. risk really their health and their lives to to combat this situation and the least we can do is sit home on the couch <laughs> yeah exactly that's a, that's the right way to put it and um speaking of your uh boutique nicholas and a little bit about the brand um you know you touched on how fashion has changed for you a little bit and and your thoughts on coming out of this time um you know what you think the trends will be and whatnot but can you elaborate a little bit specifically in the men's fashion space, what you, you know, how this time will, um, you know, impact it moving forward? And we have a few questions um, coming in about that as well. So if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, I think right now it's, it's hard to say because everybody's, we're supposed to be at home, you know, so it's, it's tough. But from what we've seen during the time, uh, since the time we've closed our boutiques till now, is that a lot of our clients um, who are in communication with us over emails and phones, they're still um, looking to buy things. So for example, this morning, I was talking with a client or it was maybe late last night to a client who he wanted to buy tie sets. So we were uh, sending arranging to send pictures this morning to him. Um, and I think uh, he, he, you know, was planning to wear those after, but you know, it's, something to keep him busy and to enjoy while he is shopping. So while he was in quarantine. So um, I think once we're out of this, it will definitely take a little bit of time to get back to the normal walking into a boutique, trying something on interacting with a salesperson, but the desire to get dressed up and to look your best and to make a good first impression or wear nice things and, and feel luxury, um, I think it's going to be explosive. I, I think, think it will be there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they saw, I saw an article the other day that there was a store in China, um, an Hermes store in China that did like record numbers for the history of sales for Hermes in one day. And that was because they're starting to normalize and people are starting to go back into their daily routines. So uh, we'll see. But I, I, I think from what we've seen with our uh, clients, um, there's still a desire for people to get dressed up just like before and maybe it will take a little bit of time for them to actual come, actually come into the store and enjoy themselves. But uh, I think that the, the overall shift uh, isn't going to be big. In the meantime, maybe people want to be more casual, wear casual things like sweaters and uh, jogging suits and uh, t-shirts, but uh, the suiting and the outerwear and the ties are all still uh, going to be very strong for us. And in that sort of casual menswear space, an anonymous uh, viewer has a has a great question, actually. Uh, Since you're an iconic menswear brand and many powerful men use your suits for work, with the work from home economy, will you be, be creating or adapting your line? 
Yeah, we're thinking about making suits, ties, and shirts with no pants so that you <laughs> can just work from home and from the waist down, you don't see anything. Um, you no, I, again, it's, it's, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I think, um, I think it's, it's not going to drastically change too much. I think people are still going to need that. They're still going to need to look good. I mean, even right now, um, I know I'm not wearing a tie, but, you know, uh, we still want it to look good and, and presentable for our, our Zoom meeting. So it's not, um, not a big concern of mine. And as soon as we're allowed to go out, we all want to dress to the nines and be yeah. are alive again, you know, reinvigorated by our fashion. Yeah, yeah, feel good. And... Yeah. Um, Chase Robertson is a, is a huge fan of yours, Nicholas. Um, he, he and his family are long-term fans of the store and, and um, wants to know how the business is weathering the storm, is online helping. He also wants to mention that he just bought four face shields and an awesome pink tie. So maybe we can yeah. talk a bit about um, you know, what you're doing with, with the face shields, which I'm sure Roxy can elaborate on as well for both of you. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, um, it's been interesting because you can imagine all our boutiques are closed, uh, but we've expanded into e-commerce for the first time during this quarantine. And actually it was interesting how that happened because we were planning to do that anyways, but when uh, the boutiques were ordered to be closed by our, our governments, um, we kind of pressed fast forward and we launched it. And it's been a very exciting uh, thing for us to see the orders coming in every day and. Uh, the most exciting thing I think has been these face shields that we're doing for charity. And that was something that really we worked and evolved. And the way it started was uh, Roxy's uh, family's business is uh, completely, which is a printing business, is completely restructured to make this vital equipment that there's a shortage of. And um, so we decided to, to make and donate 10,000 of them to first responders, to the city of Beverly Hills, to the city of Los Angeles, to the LAPD, LAFD. Cedars. Um, yeah. yeah, then it, it went into um, Cedars and uh, what was it, UCLA. UCLA. And um, anyways, when we made the announcement and, and I think Women's Wear Daily broke the news that we were doing this, we got hundreds of uh, emails and phone calls of people asking to buy them um, and uh, we said, well, 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 let's sell them and, and we'll raise money for charity because 10,000 wasn't enough. I mean, the city of Beverly Hills wanted a couple thousand, LA wanted like 8,000, 9,000. Cedars and UCLA needed as many as they could get because the hospitals, um, one uh, person who worked at the hospital uh, confidentially told me that they, they literally wear them until they can't see through them and then they have to change them. So it's not like they wear it once and then throw it away. Yeah. So 10,000 literally could, not even last a week in some of those hospitals. So uh, we started selling them on our website, which was um, the first thing for us to do something like that. First time for us to do something like that. And I think since we started doing that last week, we've probably been able to do another 10,000 face masks at, at minimum to these hospitals that need them. So we're starting to do deliveries tomorrow. I, I'm going to get all dressed up and my protective equipment and get in the, the Bijan delivery van with our drivers and go, start going around to the different uh, police stations and uh, uh, yeah, uh, hospitals and drop them off. So it's been really exciting and a good cause. And thank you uh, to everybody who's bought uh, yes, these face you. masks because it's really a great cause. And like I said, the, the people that are receiving them, they need, they need even more than what we've given. Yeah. And uh, what we've given has been so generous from the part of Roxy's family also because the materials are in such high demand that they're not easy to get. They're very expensive. So we've been able to get just what, we, what we've done and not more, but as more come available, we want to get more and, and do more. That's great. Um, thank you for doing that and, and, you know, for contributing. We all appreciate that so much. So, uh, yeah. But shifting a little bit to um, Roxy's line of work, we have a, a viewer who has a, a question for you. She says, hi, Roxy. I am an interior design student, and I'm wondering how, she, how you are handling business during this time. 
and how you're still working on projects? And in addition, how will your business change as this pandemic ends? I do everything from my phone. We send photos to my clients. I screenshot them, I draw on them, I make notes, and like move the rug over six inches with this measurement. Um, a lot just on the phone. I'm still on my phone all day working. I have like eight projects going on as we speak, but I'm not visiting job sites. I visited one, but the house was empty. I waited two days before I went there just to peak and then I left. But it's, it's I mean, it's, it's definitely gonna make it a little bit slower. I usually work pretty quickly, but I have to just make it work. And people's homes, they can't wait. People wanna, you know, it's not like you can pause a house for a month or pause a construction for a month. So it's a little bit tricky to still get people comfortable in their homes. But we're making it work. Yeah, and coming out of this would be an interesting time as I think a lot of people are investing more into their homes as well. Yeah, so many of my old clients are messaging me saying, Roxy, I've been home staring at my sofa now, I want to recover it, or I want to get new dining chairs since I'm home. Um, so I'm getting a lot of those kinds of messages from all my clients that want to do a little bit of work while they're at home doing nothing. So I think that'll continue, certainly. That's great. And I'm just going to jump to a, a sort of different area because I'm getting so many questions about how you guys met and, um, and everyone is sending a lot of love, love both of you, Jenny Rodriguez, you guys are such a power couple. So maybe you guys can walk us through how you met and now fast forward to being engaged. Okay. So I'm older than Nick by three years and I was in high school <laughs> Um, which at the time, three years is a much bigger gap than it is now, obviously. And my friend is, my best friend is Robert Kardashian. He's still one of my best friends. And he's like, Roxy, my friend Nick from Calabasas has a crush on you. I'm like, ugh, who's Nick? Like, I'm so cool. I don't, even know, I don't know who Nick is. I was like a silly 16-year-old. And Nick was 13. And then he told Nick the exact same thing. My friend Roxy has a crush on you. Robert's a really big jokester. So he like, for some reason, like kind of, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know, I don't why. know why he did that. We never actually Understood. have asked him why he decided to to tell us both that we had crushes on each other. Because I didn't tell him. I think I might have insinuated to him that I had a crush on you, but I definitely didn't tell him outright that I had a crush on you. And apparently, you didn't tell him that you had a crush on me. So he was kind of the matchmaker, but unintentionally. You know, from that time till now, we were really close friends. And then, you know, about five, six, seven years ago, maybe now, we started. Uh, you know, really, Casually dating. really, uh, yeah, I mean, even before maybe taking it to uh, the, the next level. And then uh, we got engaged in October of uh, 2019, 2018. What was it? Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is that we kind of grew up together and we had separate relationships. We stayed, still stayed really close, um, which kind of created this really amazing friendship despite our um, yeah. relationship. Yeah. So we, we had this amazing friend foundation. Friendship, but definitely, yeah. Um, so then like five years ago when we started to actually date, it was just, it was so seamless. Like we've experienced everything together already. There was no secrets. There was no, it's this really, we have a really special relationship in that sense. Yeah. We're really blessed in that mm -hmm. way. And then Nick proposed. <laughs> Please walk us through that. And if anyone has not seen this epic proposal on their Instagram pages, I highly recommend, especially... <laughs> It was, crazy. it was kind of meant to be. I don't know how, how it happened. I was trying to figure out a way to, to propose to Roxy. And a friend of hers, um, I, I had this whole plan to like do it at our house or at her parents' house or something like that. And then a friend of hers, like on the weekend that I was supposed to do it, invited her to go on a girl's trip to, to Paris. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. She's <laughs> going out of town on this weekend when I planned to do it. I had the ring. I was ready. And... Uh, so I I, uh, I called her friend and I was like, I'm so mad because I was nervous to call her. Yeah, Shiva Safai. I was nervous to call Shiva because I didn't want Shiva to tell Roxy. So I was like, how am I going to do this? So I was like, OK, I'm going to pretend to get really mad at Shiva. That way she'll feel like indebted. maybe indebted to me and scared to tell Roxy. So I, I don't know if that was a good plan or not. But anyways, like I called Shiva. I was like, I'm so mad at you. I was planning to do this this weekend and you took Roxy to Paris and I'm coming to Paris and I need your help and don't say a word to Roxy. So I, uh, I got on a plane, I posted a picture on my Instagram of me in Las Vegas um, 
On the, so, on the last day of our, my trip there, right? Supposedly last right, day. Right, right. On Roxy's, on the last day like of Roxy's trip. And I told Shiva, we'll meet on that bridge with all the love locks. And uh, I was nervous because I thought she would be calling me and I'm going to be on a plane. And like, how am I going to manage this? And also we have so many security cameras at our house because we're like constantly watching the security cameras. And I was like, she's going to see, she's going to see that I'm not at the house and my car is not at the house. And it's like, the house is but empty. I never check them. So I have to, I mean, maybe I check them a lot, but I was like, I have to come up with a reason why I'm not at home. And I'm on, I can't tell her I'm on a plane to Paris to propose. So I said, I'm going to Vegas to my store there. And I posted a picture of my store there. And I flew to, I flew to, um, to Paris, to, to London, and, or to Paris. And when, I, when uh, I got in the car and I went to that bridge and Shiva brought her there and I'm calling her name, I'm like walking behind her, Roxy, excuse me, excuse me. And she's literally walking faster, trying to run away from me. I thought was a pickpocketer. Because you, you, know, you don't know your partner's voice across the world. Like, why would I, Nick be? <laughs> she never said yes, by the way. I was so shocked. There was, there was never a yes in there. But anyways, I, I, I finally was like, Roxy, excuse me. And I tapped her on the shoulder and she turned around and okay. she, I think she thought someone died or something. She was like, what are you doing here? Yeah, I was like so confused. Then he had this gorgeous coat on and I was like, no, 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 no one died. He looks too good for some, and something the, bad to have happened. No, the other thing I, was, I didn't think through about that proposal was that, that the bridge is, you know, it's a, a bridge with all the locks people like put their locks on it so it's like a big tourist attraction right there's two things i didn't think about about that bridge one is that there's like a, there actually are a lot of pickpockets on that bridge so it's like to be there with like a, a big diamond is a little scary and then to make it a step worse a step further is that it's a bridge so the floor of the bridge is like wood planks and there's holes and gaps in between the wood planks so i when i got on my one knee i was like trying to make sure that I didn't drop the diamond into the river below us. And it was, it was luckily all worked out, but it was, it could have gone wrong. Yeah, definitely, definitely. In many ways. And, and also the, just to add one more thing, we went to dinner the next night because we extended, I extended Roxy's trip uh, and her friends who all knew I was coming in Paris. No one told me, which is a crazy they, Yeah, of course they didn't, they didn't tell her cause I was mad. Um, <laughs> they told me they're like you don't know the night before you arrived we were at dinner and roxy was freaking out about you being like if he doesn't propose to me by the end of the year i'm leaving his ass it's true. screw him and I they know, all I knew know. that i was on a plane on my way there and they're like no it's okay and they're usually the first ones to talk shit my french friends they're defending him like wait i must have been so mean that they were even def they were defending him so I was so, I felt guilty the whole night. <laughs> that was, it was perfect awesome. timing. Amazing. Was awesome. Everyone was really loving that story, you guys. So really sweet. Everyone's very touched by that. It was really but, sweet. Um, yeah, that was, that was... Are, you wearing, are you wearing your ring, Roxy? I'm not. It's in my safe. Should I go get it? What's going on? I'm not wearing anything. I'm not wearing a watch. I always have a watch on. I'm doing so many dishes all day. Washing like... hands all day. Actually, she threw the ring in the trash the other day. I found it in the trash. She couldn't find it and she started freaking out. Freaking out. And also our insurance policy had lapsed like on it too in that period of time. Like we hadn't renewed it yet. And I found it in the trash can. It wasn't a fun night. I fully found it in the trash can. <laughs> That's wow. a real thing. That really happened. That's I swear to God. Swear to God that happened. That happened, yeah. Um there are a lot of people enjoying that story, like I said, but Jeremiah Gonzalez has a very specific question about something that he saw on your Instagram story that you mm. covered in the Nespresso. Yes. We did. Uh, we had to use it this morning because I ran an espresso. Oh my, I came out of the, the bedroom this morning and into the kitchen. I went to look for, I went to make a coffee and I said, please refill it with beans. And I in the didn't have any beans left. Um, yeah, I had that Nespresso for so long and I've been wanting to buy this coffee machine, but it's so expensive. And I was like, in my right mind, I could never buy something so expensive for a coffee machine. And then I started getting bored at home, obviously, over the last month. And I started like, itch I don't know who, el who else has been itching to buy things online, but I've been thinking more and more about it. And then Roxy came in one day to the living room or into the kitchen and was like, I can't drink this Nespresso anymore. It's disgusting. It, the pods, 
they're metal. They, the pods must metal. be causing cancer or something. It cannot be healthy. And we drink so much of it. And actually the machine like kind of stopped working too that day. So I was like, okay, the sign. <laughs> and I bought this thing. I've never been more excited to receive it. I tracked it every day on, on the tracking Literally every US, hour. USPS tracking app. And it arrived, I set it up. It's like, I'm running a Starbucks in my house, okay? My housekeeper, me, everybody Nick gets makes espressos. makes everyone coffee in the morning. This has never happened. It's so good. It's probably, they have less expensive ones. They have more expensive ones also, but they have less expensive ones. I would highly uh, suggest getting one. Uh, it's really easy. You just put the coffee, the espresso beans in the top, and then you press like latte, cappuccino, whatever you want, and it makes a beautiful coffee drink. And um, you have to clean it a lot, but it's okay. It's really good. Who makes it? Jura, J-U-R-A. Yeah, J-U-R-A. My friend from um, Monaco had one in his house and he convinced me to buy one and now I'm convincing you guys to buy one. <laughs> yeah, well, Jeremy. It's so great, it's convenient, but I just feel like, I don't oh, know. Oh yeah, I mean, I drank it every day for like seven, eight years and I have one also in my office and it's, it's so convenient. As, after knowing how much you have to clean these things, <laughs> the fact that you can just put a little pod in there and press go and every morning it's ready, it's, it's great, but um it was a fun it was a fun activity that uh, i suggest uh, if you like good coffee you get awesome um we have a question about your father nicholas sure um i have a feeling even though it's an, an anonymous attendee i have a feeling i might know who, who sent this one in i remember the late great mr Bijan on the cover of hope living what advice do you think he would give to us today to make it through these tough times yeah, it was his birthday. Um, it was his birthday on April 4th, so just a little while ago. And we were thinking, like, what would he think of all of this? But, you know, he was such a great, like, personality, as, as uh, I'm sure the person uh, who wrote that question knew. And um, I think he would have had great advice for us, but also he would have probably brought some humor into, into all of this. And... Um, it would have been fun to to be quarantined with him, I think. And his garden at his house was like the most beautiful garden. And he had the same problem that I have. He never got to spend any time at his house. So I would have loved to see it after a month of being quarantined there. It would have been like the Amazon or something. <laughs> but um, I think he would have, he would have, you know, he would have played it smart. He would have focused on the most important things is everybody's health and their safety and doing what's uh, right. And, I think you'd be very proud of what we've done with these uh, protective equipment for everybody in, in need. And uh, I think he would have probably brought some humor into the whole thing and, and had, had some fun that way. But uh, that's a very sweet question. And that was an amazing uh, story that Hot Living did on my father. And that was uh, almost 10 years ago now. And it's still one of the best magazine covers and stories that I've ever seen, uh, period, not just on my dad. Do you want to just mention to everyone watching how they can, if they can, still get face shields? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we're selling them on our website, the Bijan ones. Uh, if you want some, you know, I guess people have been calling it a collector's item, but if you want to protect yourself with something that says Bijan on it and you can keep it for, you know, memories, uh, we're selling them on there for $40. Every uh, dollar goes to uh, producing and buying more for the, the people at the hospitals and uh, the police departments and fire departments. Alternatively, if you want to donate some to somewhere that you, uh, you decide, whether it's a nursing home or your grandparents or whoever it may be that you want to send them to, uh, the company that makes them is called AccuShield. And on their website, accushield.net, A-C-U-S-H-E-I-L-D. I-E-L-D. I-E-L-D, <laughs> .net, you can actually, you can buy them and then you can write in your checkout where it says, you know, it asks, is this a donation? And when you stipulate where, yes, it's a donation, you can say where you want to donate it to and they'll actually ship them directly to that address. So say, um, or... yeah, say you, you know, you want to send it to the, the people who are working at Bristol Farms or at Whole Foods or at, you know, maybe a, a, your local fire department rather than the whole uh, LAFD, you want to send it to your local station by your house. You can literally go and write, you know, this is to the address and send them uh, on our behalf. And those are 
not as expensive as the Bijan ones, but uh, it's it's going Still very well priced. Yeah, so but you're personally awesome. donating it. We're not yeah. going to go and make you know a bunch of them and then donate them on 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 your behalf per se. So uh, two ways: Bijan.com or uh, AccuShield.net. Um, we're getting a few questions about both of your um, careers, so I'm going to ask Nicholas one to you first, and then Roxy. Um, Nicholas, you took over the business. This is from Tommy Falore again. You took over the business at such a young age. How was that for you? What advice do you have for young business owners taking over a family business in terms of pressure or other factors um, that affected you? Well, I was lucky enough to not only work with my dad when I was uh, younger, but also to have such an incredible group of uh, people within our business that shared the same goal that I shared. We all wanted to just continue the business, grow the business, make um, my father's legacy bigger and better every every chance we got. So that was part of um, you know my story, and that might not be uh, that might be unique to me, but that was something that you know if we're talking about the last nine or so years of my career. Uh, I have to definitely start by saying that the people within our business that have been there for so many years uh, were really the, the reason why we were able to continue and I was able to learn and grow within the business and uh, actually if it wasn't for those people not only would our business be where it is today but what I I would not be where I am today. Um, on a separate topic for people in family businesses when my father was alive and I was working with him, there was a lot of things he did on a daily basis that I was uh, seeing and I didn't understand at the time or I thought I knew maybe being a teenager, you think you know everything. So, you know, I always would tell him, you know, you should do it this way or it should be like that. And I would be very quick to um, have an opinion. Have an opinion. Yeah, I'd be very quick to maybe uh, be critical of something. And years later, I really after he was gone, I really understood a lot of things that he did in a different context. And I really, it really opened my eyes to saying, wow, you know, that made a lot of sense. Uh, and now I see that in, in hindsight. Um, so one thing that I always tell my friends who are in family businesses and really any business besides family businesses is to take advantage of the knowledge and experience that people have, uh, in those businesses. So my dad, you know, started the company in 1976. And by the time I was 19, the company had been around for 38 years. So there was 38 years of experience that I was discounting by having these critical opinions. Um, and whether they were right or wrong is not the important part. The point is that experience is not something you can buy. It's something that you, you get over time. And uh, if you're in a family business or you're in any business and you have the opportunity to learn from people who are in the business longer than you, you should definitely take advantage of that because that's not a, um, that's a very, that's an invaluable resource and it's not always there, you know? So. Um, they make the mistakes for you. Yeah. Yeah. They know how to do it. Yeah. And, and it's hard to do that sometimes because like today the business environment is so different than it was uh, like 15, 20 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. But um, the overall like important principles, I've always been able to kind of just think back and say, well, this is something that's maybe happened in a different way before. And this is how my father handled it. And, and I think that um, that experience that uh, he had is the biggest tool in help, helping problem, solve problems. So that's my advice to anybody who's in a family business is just to, or any business is to learn from uh, past mistakes and, and, and uh, past lessons, things like that. That's lovely. And um, Roxy, I know now you're in interior design, obviously, but as I mentioned earlier, you have a past in reality TV. So an anonymous viewer wants to know if any reality TV is in your future and if you are still in touch with anyone from your show. I would do a design show. Um, I almost did one, but they wanted a little bit too much personal life. Um, but I kind of want to focus it more on work. Um, my nature of my business is so many dramatic moments and problem solving on a daily basis. So I think that's the nature of really great for TV. Um, 
but I wouldn't do a personal like reality show again like I did last time. I'm happy I did it, but I'm ready to do other things. And I still keep in touch. I'm friendly with everybody on the show. We're all adults and so much time has passed. But yeah, we're all friends. Friendly. Yeah. I, I mean, speaking of friends, um, someone named Stephanie Shojai. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Steph. Hey. Ask Thank you. Please move to Miami. Please uh, move to LA. Yeah. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> or we can switch. Yeah, no, we need to get you guys here and then they can go, you know, like a timeshare all of us all together. <laughs> um, how many suit and tie combinations do you own, Nicholas? Oh my God. I don't know. A lot. I built Nicholas a gorgeous closet. She did. She built the, the most epic closet. We bought this house and it had a his and hers, but the hit, it was the, the previous owner of our house was a, a, a lady. So the hers was really nice, but the his was kind of whatever. Um, and now whoever buys this house from us is going to have the opposite problem. <laughs> His closet is twice the size of mine. But we, yeah, we, I, I mean, I have so many suits that uh, some of them are like 20 years old and they're just like new, but I, I either I don't fit in them or I have to tailor them. You know, the thing about our clothing is that when it's made with such uh, a high quality, not only the, the craftsmanship, but the materials, they last for a lifetime. So I have, like I've said in the past, I have so many suits that belong to my dad that I've just retailored and, and they fit me now and they're like new. Um, but we have like a rotating closet. We'll bring like 30 or 40 into one clo my closet and then 30 or 40 will go into one of the guest rooms. And then when the seasons change or my weight changes or whatever may change, they come back and they go back. So um but yeah, I, I have no idea. More than I can count, more than I need. But um, it's an occupational hazard, I guess. I'm lucky He's for that. Allowed. Yeah. And um, we're getting a lot of questions about Roxy, your, your wedding dress. Um, somebody asked if it would be Bijan yellow, which... Um, I honestly almost bought a yellow dress. I was about to pay for it and do it. And then I was like, maybe I should sleep on it. And I slept on it. I'm like, no, I can't have a yellow dress as my main dress. I don't want to hear about the dress. I'm that's not supposed all to know I'll say. It. It was almost going to do yellow dress, but it's not yellow. I was very close. Got it. Got <laughs> it. Okay, cool. So I'm sorry we didn't get to answer everyone's questions, but I want to save a little bit of time to play a little game with you guys. I know we, I briefed you slightly um, on this sort of blind, fun little thing. So if you guys could put your blindfolds on. I need one. Yours, because you're a Gemini. Okay. You're quick five questions and without using your voices just point at the person whom it um, applies to more yourself or your partner are you guys ready ready yeah, don't cheat i'm not are you sure yeah i swear gemini guys ready to go over there okay <laughs> who is messier okay. okay who is more likely to cry in a sad movie <laughs> who initiated the first kiss? Who is funnier? <laughs> okay. Who takes longer to get ready in the morning? Uh-huh. And who spends more money? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding? Wait, wait, wait. No, wait, wait, we're not done. We're not done. We more. Almost done. Who complains more? Ooh, that's me. There goes the without your voices, but that's fine. You're pointing at me. I no, I know. wasn't. I swear. <laughs> Who is lazier? Mm -hmm. Okay, and who's the one? Uh, who's the first one to open a bottle of wine in the evening? Who's the morning person of the relationship? Who'd be the first to laugh at an inappropriate time? And last question, who is more obsessed with red? Oh. <laughs> and just for everyone to know, red is that very, very cute third party who has made uh -huh. a lovely appearance into our little Zoom session. Yes. Formal introduction of red. Oh, is it red the Vishla or Vishla, however you pronounce it? 
Next, his next Christmas gift. She's six months. He's obsessed with her. She is the best. We've that we've spent a lot of quality time together. She's on very, very codependent. If we leave the room, she freaks out. Mm -hmm. Well, she's beautiful, and so are you guys. And I, I thank you guys so much for being so fun. Thank that you. That was fun. Thank you. I want to. I want to watch it back and see who won. If we were. Yeah, you must. Were we, were we disagreeing a lot? Uh, 50 50. <laughs> 50 50. But um, thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks, thanks guys. Yeah, stay and home. We look forward to getting past all of this stuff and getting back to our normal lives and, and dressing fabulously. Yeah, and, and, and doing what makes us all happy. Absolutely. And don't forget to pick up your Bijan face shields, um, everything. Yeah, yes. definitely. So thank you guys so much. And for everyone watching, be sure to head over to hopeliving.com to see some other very exciting sessions we have this week. So thank you guys again and see you, see you soon. See you. Bye. Thank you guys. Thank you.